Hi everyone, it's Mark, and today we're going to listen to an audio recording of a sovereign citizen in court using the Mark Stevens jurisdiction argument. Let's roll the audio. Sir, are you uh, in a position to settle, or do you want to step out Um, basically, I, I guess, I, has the prosecutor submitted any of the evidence that I requested? from last time. You guys remember, recall the evidence? The defendant has the discovery. Is that a yes, that you've submitted evidence yes. of what I requested? Yeah, the police report. OK. Uh, the police report is, is that evidence of jurisdiction? Yes. And you can show me that? Where, where in the police report that it proves jurisdiction? It states the location, which is in the county of Napa. All right, so at this time, are you ready to send the matter for trial, sir? Uh, like I said before last time, that I was coming here because I know I don't want to waste any of your guys' time. I don't want to waste my time. That's why I had the intention and still have the intentions of pleading guilty just to get it all wrapped up. I just want to make an informed plea. And for me to make an informed plea, I just want to make sure that the prosecutor has done their job and submitted any evidence of jurisdiction. That's where you're wrong. They don't have to prove jurisdiction. Hell, if anything, you would have to prove that for some reason they don't have jurisdiction. Um, on the record last time, the prosecutor said on record they don't have any evidence of jurisdiction and couldn't provide it that day. And I recall them saying something that you'll, they'll be able to bring it up next time, but I, I still don't see anything. So, um, you know, I conclude that this this just be dismissed on those grounds. Right. We talked about this the last time. I denied your request to dismiss. On what grounds? Uh, there's no basis. Oh, there's no grounds to deny. No, there's no basis to dismiss your case. Um, has my demur, my motion, been opposed? We already dealt with your demur, sir. And so now we're at the point where if you don't want to resolve, you keep saying you want to plead guilty, but... Uh, I have intentions of pleading guilty. So then either that happens today or we set the case for a jury trial, and if you want to resolve at your readiness conference, we can do that as well. Okay. Okay, well, I'm here today to just wrap this up. I mean, can, can jurisdiction be challenged at any time? That's, that's an element, right? I mean... What are the elements of, of accusations? I your attorney. Neither can uh, Ms. Quaid, as she represents the people. So if you believe in the attorney, you have that right. You can either hire your own or if you'd like to vote for your Last time you said you did not want to vote for your then you can make sure again. Do you want an attorney to help you with your case, sir? I don't want to give away that right. But I, I don't see why how we can even go forward if the prosecutor can't prove jurisdiction. Don't these sovereign citizens watch each other's videos? Don't they see that this nonsensical defense has never worked? Sir, you I, I have don't. To listen to my question and answer. Do you want an attorney to help you or not? No, I don't. Okay. Do you want to resolve this case today or not? I would love to get it resolved today. Right. And like I said, I have. Do you want to take that offer? What's the offer? Be, is it still the same? Yes. Okay. It would be pleading to counts one and four. Anything else would be uh, dismissed, so that would be the uh, 2800 and 2402. So specifically, count one is disobedience. Disobedience. Main, main, main officer, and uh, unsafe initial vehicle. Those would be the two charges. Everything else would be dismissed. You would be placed on two years of summary probation. You would get credit for any jail time you've already served, no additional jail. Uh, there would be a minimum fines of $70 for each charge, plus a $150 for restitution fine if you set And that's if you want to agree with probation. If not, it's like the offer is probation denied and 90 days jail. You don't want to agree with probation. So do you want to take either one of those offers, sir? Um, for me to make an uh, informed plea today, I just would like a few things clarified 
and you know it's I just want to make sure the prosecutor has the burden of proof right yes, sir. and I'm presumed innocent of all charges and I, I didn't commit any crime I didn't hurt anybody so no but I mean, no one's harmed that's telling me that you don't want to resolve the matters for trial. I never said that and I, I just I'm just trying to figure out the best plea to make and you know, if the elements of the accusations is injury, harm, or da damage, or redressability, isn't jurisdiction, isn't that part of the elements of accusations? All right, sir. Just have a seat in the audience. We'll take up your case after our morning break. We'll call the, I think it's Smith If you could just provide evidence, I'll have the intentions of pleading guilty. Again, nothing's been provided on the record. So now outside the courtroom, a real lawyer tries to talk to him and explain what jurisdiction is. But do you think this sovereign citizen will listen? What's up? The jurisdiction question, I don't think you understand jurisdiction. Oh, I fully understand jurisdiction. Okay, but the jurisdiction question you're asking about, mm -hmm. on the complaint itself, is satisfied. If this happened in Napa County, in the state of California, whatever they accuse you of, right? Whether you did it or not. Yeah, I can understand if it's like a murder or rape no, 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 or something. No, 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 it's anything. Any law broken, right? Any law. I didn't break any laws. I broke statutes and codes. Okay, Supposedly, statute, I'm going to allege. Right, right, right. But those don't gonna, override the law. I'm trying to help you. Statutes and codes, mm -hmm. which are the same thing, Pretty much is it. the law. It's not the law. It is the law. Here's the definition of statute. A written law passed by a legislative body. In other words, sovereign citizen, statutes are laws. No. Okay. That's putting a helmet on your bicycle or putting a light on your no, no, that's no, no, not no. the law. Anything that they say is a rule of society, whether it's municipal code, whether it's black people drinking from water, those white aren't people. laws anymore. Those are okay. those cannabis. Been, which is still currently the law. Okay. So whether really. whether it's right or wrong, that's a totally different discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying what the law is. So, and so for the, I just want to explain the jurisdiction thing. When they say, like, for instance, okay, so for instance, it says people of the state of California versus XYZ. Mm -hmm. And then they say, on or about this date in the county of Napa, state of California, they accuse you of violating whatever, right? By saying in the county of Napa, the state of California, that satisfies the jurisdictional question. Under the law, it satisfies the jurisdictional question. Okay. I never signed up for any of that. I, I can understand, like, no, if no, no, I no, if I join the military, I sign off my life to them. Right. They have jurisdiction. Right. I never I, did that to these guys. These it, are just men and women trying to collect money from it me. It doesn't matter. I didn't hurt it. anyone, and there's no damaged property. Look, so there's sure. corpus delecti. I talked about this in a previous video, but corpus delecti doesn't mean what they think it means. They think corpus delecti means a physical, real corpse as in a dead body which is not what it means and they are 100 percent wrong when they say corpus delecti jurisdiction Done. okay you're not Dismissed. you don't understand the terms you're using no, I jurisdiction all that means oh, is the ability here. for the court well. to hear this okay mm -hmm. so for instance if this happened in solano county this court couldn't happen i mean couldn't hear it okay so all i'm saying is yeah it happened in napa Right. Whatever which they're means, alleging me with. Which means that, now, whether you did it or not, different question. has nothing to do with jurisdiction. Okay? That's what you argue out. Well, but, it's because for me to go further in this room, in this office with these people right. that I don't even know, they need to prove their jurisdiction. Which they have. They don't saying, have facts, though. They don't right. have actual evidence, no. physical evidence. Listen. You're, you're, they have a piece of paper saying right. I have jurisdiction. That's all. That's not that's physical all evidence. No. Evidence is not jurisdiction, though. Jurisdiction is the allegation that this took place in Napa County. So Whether it actually Jurisdiction is an element of these accusations that they're accusing me of, though, right? It's right. an element. And they've like injury. And they've satisfied that by saying this took place in Napa. Just by saying it. Yeah. That, like magic. Right. No. Yes. Yeah. In the real reality, no, that's not how it works. You can't just be like, hey, I have jurisdiction over you. Who are these men and women? Right. They say they're my right. government. Where's the proof? So I'm assuming you got a, you got a ticket, right? 
no, they pulled me over and accused me of having cannabis right. and not listening to an officer. Right. Okay. I, I got pulled over for, there was no crime committed. Okay. They just pulled me over. Right, but they pulled you over. Uh, and and they, they don't have jurisdiction either. That's why I didn't roll down my window for him. Just because he has a badge. I've seen people get their house raided by fake police. I don't know who the hell this guy is. I have the right to privacy. I have the right to, to pursue happiness. You know, what the hell? I'm rolling my, I'm rolling my window up, and I'm getting pissed. Right. You but, know? But I'll citizen arrest him right, trying to but, but pull him over for no reason. But the law. Whether the law is a good law or bad Common law. Common law. Reality. Hurting somebody. Damaging their property. Okay. Law. Okay. Right? Well. I mean, don't you agree? If you, if you got pulled over, brake lights out. Right. Who's hurt? What happened? I and happen, all of a sudden, this cop's trying to listen, search you. I happen to, You're going to protect yourself, listen, right? I happen to agree with you. I'm trying to tell you what the law is. So I'm is. standing up for my rights. Right. So until we all start helping each other do that, this mm -hmm. is going to keep happening. We're okay. going to just keep screwing but people I'm, over I'm for just trying no to, crime. I'm just trying to help you with the question of jurisdiction. I okay. fully understand what jurisdiction means. That's why I'm asking them, hey, can you provide evidence? And when they point and towards the a police statement, right. that's not evidence. There's no physical facts there. It is the evidence. That is enough. The allegation that this took place in Napa. That's just the, your opinion and their opinion. Where's, where's the facts? You gotta let me finish, mm -hmm. okay? I'm trying. I'm to happy God, to let you finish. I, I know, but you keep interrupting me, and I swear to God, I'm trying to help you. We know you're trying to help him, lawyer, but like all sovereign citizens, they are too stubborn to listen. Okay. Jurisdiction is, hey, court, can you hear this? If the answer to that is this allegedly mm -hmm. took place in this county. Mm -hmm. Then the answer is, yes, court, you can hear this. That's jurisdiction. That's all it means. It has nothing to go. It means nothing as far as whether you're guilty or not. It doesn't hurt you uh, or help you. All mm -hmm. it means is that this court has the power to hear this matter to then let you fight it or not. Okay? That's all jurisdiction is. Yeah, well, they're going to have to force me into a plea because I'm not pleading until they can prove their jurisdiction. And that's going to be under no, no, threat, no. duress, proving, and coercion. Proving it's not jurisdiction. Okay, so what I'm saying is you got to get past the jurisdiction question. They have jurisdiction. But they, they have to prove that you committed the crime or not. Okay, so that's totally separate. So I can go say I have jurisdiction. You just go pull someone over. No, Why because you're people? not the state. I don't yeah, know who are these people? Hmm? I don't know that. Just because he has a robe and a nice building, they have jurisdiction? Right, because they're authorized by the state and we live Who's the with state? the state. So the state pays them, right? The state pays the state, them. Doesn't and we the, pay state, the state. But doesn't the state pay we, the prosecutor too? You pay taxes? No, no way. No? Why would I pay them? So I'm trying to figure it out. The prosecutor gets paid by the state. The judge gets paid by the state. Mm -hmm. So the lawyers, the, the, the already paid lawyers. So they all work together. No, Already, that's not they a fair... They don't work together. Well, I mean, they don't work together, but they all get paid by the same people. Right. So if you help me right now challenge jurisdiction and mm -hmm. get it through their head, like, hey, where's the facts? Just the paper is not facts. Come on. Then right there, you'd be looked at, this guy helped him, and he's able you know, to get him out of here, you know? No, I don't get paid by the state. I'm a private attorney. Okay, but I'm saying if you are it coming is. into these courtrooms, you have leeway if they like you. You know, if they don't like you, obviously they're just going to play hardball on you. And they're going to railroad you all the time. You know, I did no, I did nothing. I literally got pulled over, harassed. They searched me. Okay. They threw me in jail. I'm kind of my care, truck. I don't care what happened. I'm just trying to explain and help you with the jurisdiction question. You, you're not accepting my definition of jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. I wish you the best. It's a definition. It is the law. Okay? So you can accept that or not. But until you realize that, until you accept that jurisdiction, the question that you're bringing up, has nothing to do mm -hmm. as far as your guilt or innocence. has nothing to do with it, okay? All it has to do Isn't is... Isn't it an element of the accusation, though? No. Isn't that a... No, hmm. it's not. It's not. Jurisdiction is only the power of this particular court to hear a matter. Hmm. So if this happened in Solano County, this court couldn't hear it. You'd have to go to Solano County. If it happened in Los Angeles County, this court couldn't hear it. You'd have to go down to Los Angeles County. That's all jurisdiction is. Mm, okay. So the to me, jurisdiction is pretty big. I mean, it's like yeah, no. I'm under, only here under, under, under law, threat. Under the law, and what you're, what you keep arguing or asking about as far as jurisdiction. Yeah, I'm not arguing. I'm just asking a question. Well, arguing meaning positing statements to the court. Okay, saying, look, they have to do this court. They've done that. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, they said so, it's on a piece of paper, but there's no. It's facts. in it's in the allegation that this took place in Napa. 
you're not arguing that it didn't take place in Napa. If, if they can come up with physical, mm -hmm. any physical evidence that the, that the Constitution of California applies to me, I will plead guilty today. The fact That's that all you're we here, do. you're present here, mm -hmm. whether you are a resident of California, doesn't matter. The lawyer does make a good point. If the court has no jurisdiction, why is the sovereign citizen even there? If you're in our boundaries, I understand. It yeah, yeah, it keeps going in a loop. Right. Our, our, so our conversation. Here, right. So the fact that you're here. That's just words, though. Where's the physical proof? The like, if I shot someone, the where's the gun? The physical, where's the glove? The physical proof that it applies to you is the fact that you're standing here within this state that we call but California. But he didn't hurt anybody. Yeah. And I'm totally only standing here issue. under threat. Totally separate issue. I'm not saying. Uh, that he's guilty or innocent or what he did was wrong or not wrong or whether it was even a crime. Yeah. All I'm saying is the fact that you're here in California, in the county of Napa, okay, and what they're accusing you of, they're saying you did this, whether you did it or not, doesn't matter, because that's later, but they're saying you did this in Napa County, that's all jurisdiction means, okay? So you're... So if you want to fight your case, you got to get past that. They have no case if they have no jurisdiction. If they have no case, I didn't commit any crime. Okay. All right. Well, good luck. All right. Good luck. The lawyer tried his best, but there's no point in trying to reason with idiots. Now the case goes back into the courtroom. Let's listen. This is Joe Vaughn. How are you? Like I said before, I'd like to just get this over with today. Uh, and, uh, you know, I do have the intentions of just pleading guilty today. If, you know, you know, I, I did ask about jurisdiction and it has been challenged, so it must be proved. And, you know, um, I, I know that she brought up the ticket but I don't understand how that's actual physical, you know, facts that the jurisdiction applies to me. And, you know, I'm interested in resolving this today, but to be fair, I feel it should be discussed, you know, and dismissed at least with prejudice, unless the prosecution can show any evidence of the statutes and code being applicable without me being a party to it. I, I, I said I had the intentions today just to get it over with, because I'm moving to Austin, Texas, and. I mean, this, this is silly. I, mean, I got pulled over and they, they allege I have cannabis. I didn't listen to a cop. I, I don't even know who these men were pulling me over. Uh -oh. um, Your Honor, um, one of the local attorneys who's here on another case did, did try to chat with Mr. Vaught on the break and explain to him what jurisdiction is and what needs to be proven. Objection. I, I, I understand what um, jurisdiction is. Well. Um, and I think the defendant still still is not understanding how it works, and I, I'm prepared to submit to the court that he doesn't understand the nature of the proceedings, um, and I would just invite the court's attention to Penal Code Section 1368. I don't... Uh, objection. Point of clarification. What is this Penal Code? I, I don't speak this legalese language. Yes, there are different codes. Yeah. And, um, Plate is referencing codes, code. codes and statutes. It's the same thing, right? And it's Penal Code Section 1368. Do you have something I can look at that says this? Because I, I never went to law school for any of this. And then hire a lawyer. It's not the prosecution's job to help you. Well. What the court has to determine right now is if I believe that I should have your matter referred for someone to speak with you uh, to um, determine whether or not you are competent to understand the proceedings. Competent. It, correct. It seems as if you understand lots of things, but it doesn't appear to me that you understand uh, what is going on in this legal realm. And it may be that you really just need to sit down with an attorney and have that person explain something to you. Or, I don't know what the, the Yeah, the attorney I, did talk to me. I, I don't know who that man was. Right, he, he doesn't represent me, but, it, 
you know, from my understanding, you know, I, I, I feel this should be dismissed because he says the ticket is jurisdiction. Just because I'm physically here in Napa, that that ticket says, hey, this, this means we have jurisdiction over you. But from what I understand, the only way you have jurisdiction over me without a victim is if I have agreed. And I just, you know, show me where I agreed to this. So you're incorrect. So I don't know if you just don't understand the legal terms or you just don't understand things. And I can't really make a determination right now, but I'm going to appoint the public defender. I'm going to try this step by step. I'm going to appoint an attorney to help you. And then uh, after that attorney speaks with you, then he or she can let the court know uh, what their uh, determination is. And then we'll go from there. Um, because I don't want to jump too far ahead. Because it seems as if you were able to understand uh, some of the things that we're saying, but it's the legal terms that you don't seem to understand. And I think you really need to sit down with someone who you know is your attorney, not someone you're not sure who they are. That was just an attorney that was just trying to assist you in the court. And that's why um, I can't really I, I, I don't want to move any further until jurisdiction can be proved. So I'm going to appoint the public yeah. defender's office. I, I'm not going to go there, and I deny any lawyers that try to tell me the law because they're obviously holding something back from me. Well, you haven't even met the person yet. Well, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious what I'm I'm asking here, you know, and it's it's pretty simple. I'm just asking for jurisdiction, and are you are you denying me due process? Absolutely. Because that's why, sir, that's why I'm trying to give you a, an attorney so you can understand. These terms, it seems as if you know jurisdiction, you know the term due process, but I don't know if you understand what those mean. I know, I, I'm very familiar with jurisdiction. I never signed up for it. I understand if I'm in the military, I, I give my, no, no. my life away for four years. Off, so you, you don't understand the term. Just by what you're telling me, you're explaining to me that you don't understand what jurisdiction is. So you're going to proceed this case without any evidence of jurisdiction? I am going to appoint an attorney to assist you. And if you are moving, then we should put this on as soon as possible, so this Thursday. I'm moving to Austin. I can't even come back here. I, right now, I'm living in Eugene, Oregon. It costs me so much money and days to get down here. Is there any way we can do like a telephonic hearing or something? No. Telephonic, because coming down here is not going to work. No. I don't have the money to come down here, and you know. You're not going to be able to do a telephonic hearing. Are you telling me that you cannot come back to court? No, I did. Especially if you have no jurisdiction, I keep coming back here saying the same thing. We're just going in circles here. You know, I, I'm just here because you know I'm under threat duress and coercion and that's the only reason why I'm here. So if I signed off my jurisdiction, yeah, I would be here willingly. Well, you uh, have an agreement that you did sign that says that you're not, you promise not to leave the state without permission from the court. I'm not giving you permission to leave the state. I'm going to set another court date and you have to be here. If you're not here, then a warrant will go out for your arrest, and that means you would be in custody until your case resolves. Do you understand? Yeah, that's a threat, of course. Yeah, if I'm threatened to be here, I'm going to be here. You're threatening me with jail. It's, it's letting you know the consequences of you not coming to court. All right, well, I, I don't want to waste your time or anyone's time. I have the intention of pleading guilty today just to finish it. This case would have been over a long time ago if you didn't make your silly, nonsensical jurisdiction argument. Here's what, what happens. If you do not want to take the offer, then we will set the case for a trial. So I need you to answer my question. Do you want to take the offer? I mean, I'm trying to make an informed yes plea today. No. Do you want to take the offer? Uh, if I'm being forced under duress, I, you know. So it sounds like you don't want to take the offer. We're going to have your case on this Thursday. September 22nd. I can't make it this Thursday. You have to put it out further. I can't make it. I just can't. Why not? I, I live in Eugene, Oregon. I have to go back. I can't just go back and forth that quickly. It would have to be put out. Founder, is public defender available right now in Department E? Yeah, could we just finish we're, this today? We're proceeding under 1368. Do you, do you want me to call over? It's one here. Yeah, that would be great. You want me to call, should I call Mr. Abernathy? And he's, he's going to bring facts and evidence of jurisdiction so we can just get this over with? Sir, the judge is appointing you an attorney. I can't talk to you anymore, okay? Let me just make a phone call.
All right. Have a seat. Let me know. Do you want me to have a seat? And yet, right back to the front. Hope he brings jurisdiction. Evidence. So now this judge appoints this guy an attorney because this sovereign citizen clearly doesn't understand the law and that they do, in fact, have jurisdiction. That although a, a deputy appointed Mr. Abernathy was coming back at 1.30 for an 8.30 case, he was appointed in the Oh, here? Apparently. That's fine. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. Right here. And then we'll see if we need to move it over. Sure. And does it make sense okay. for me to be here too if I'm not going to talk to the lawyer? At 1.30. 1 1.30. But I'm not going to talk to him until we figure this out because I challenge jurisdiction. The court must prove it before I move on. Well, that's what the attorney is there for. They're the one representing you, so they can present to the court. I never said I wanted to be represented. So we'll see you at 1.30. Uh, do you want to have a public defender represent you? I don't want to give up that right, but at the moment, no. No. Okay. Um, has the has the court declared a doubt under 1368? I have not. Uh, that was brought up, okay. and I was trying to explain to Mr. Watt what that meant. And I okay. thought perhaps we might want to speak with an attorney. Okay. Before. Oh, is this where you're trying to define something, the legalese that I didn't understand? I'm happy to. I'm happy to explain, answer some questions for you if you want me to, without even being appointed. Just to um, I'd rather just, I have the intentions to just plead guilty and get this over with today. And, um, you know, I just want to go back to, um, you know, what I was saying. And uh, the, from what I remember, the prosecutor said that the evidence of jurisdiction is in the actual ticket itself or it's in the uh, police sorry, can I, can I interrupt, interrupt for a second? I, I am the lawyer on the case, so I'm, I'm going to have to say a few things before we proceed. So if you could stand to my left. Sure. I mean, this man does not represent me. Well, apparently I do right now. Um, I deny that. What, what's your name, sir? Uh, they call me Joel Vaught. Okay. Mr. Um, Vaught has the uh, constitutional right to um, a lawyer of his choosing, including the uh, right to represent himself if he um, sees fit. Um, if the court has a doubt about his competence, then um, the court can appoint me. Objection. Uh, yeah, what are you saying about my comment? Mr. Vaught, I've asked you not to answer. I don't ask about your comment. Okay. Okay. It, I'm, I'm just trying to tell the court what I think the law is on this situation. Um, so if the court has a doubt and declares a doubt, um, then um, you can't appoint me. Um, otherwise, I, if, unless um, that proceeding begins, I think Mr. Vaught has the constitutional right to represent himself. Okay. okay. I agree. Uh, I want Objection. I, that's why I'm here. I'm trying to get clarification right, so on jurisdiction. Paul, if you say that you want clarification, that's why I have a lawyer who has been trained in this arena to explain that to you. Okay. I've tried, but you, you don't talk? seem to understand when I say it. So I thought maybe yeah. a lawyer can help you. Yeah, well, it can't hurt to talk to me. Well, the private. prosecutor is saying that the, the ticket the well, officer no, I mean, gave let's me. Let's go talk in private. No, I'd rather not, not talk in private. Why can't everyone just hear this? The, she I says that the I don't ticket. Talk to clients in, in public. Oh, I'm not trying to hide anything. I have nothing well, I to hide. I am. I am. I'm okay. a lawyer. I have, well, I don't want to talk to people that have stuff to hide. She said that the ticket and the police report prove jurisdiction over me. And I'm just trying to figure out where does that. Where does it say that in the ticket or the police statement? I'm just trying to get it clarified so I can shop for it. If you're present in California, the um, the courts have um, a personal jurisdiction over you. Because I'm physically here. Mm -hmm. And where is the facts? Where is the evidence of that? Where is the proof that you're on here? The... I, anybody can see that you're here. Okay. So it's, it's, it's so it's the same thing I could say to you guys. Since you're here, yeah, I have jurisdiction. Yeah, the also have jurisdiction over, over, over So this me. is like philosophy or just word of mouth. And yeah. in, in essence, yeah. Okay, so it's just word magic. You're saying that you have jurisdiction just because yeah, you say so. I'm going to declare a doubt about um, uh, this gentleman's competence to stand trial. Objection. So now he's calling me stupid? Are no, you, I'm not. I just, I, 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 no, I, I have a doubt about your competence, and I, I have a... Because I'm challenging jurisdiction. Isn't jurisdiction, so isn't Mr. that... Bob, if you could just have a seat, you're going to have to send this to another courtroom.
The court-appointed attorney is now questioning this sovereign citizen's competency, and I can see why. He's been told what jurisdiction is at least 20 times now, and he's still trying to argue it. All right, yeah, I've been writing things down too so I can make an appeal because this is just out of control. I'm asking for jurisdiction. She can't prove it. It's already been on the record that she can't prove it. Okay, you've, you've lost your objection. Mm -hmm. All right, to the Thank you. So I, I'm not available in, until like October 16th is when I'll be so back in California. Today. Okay. Be cool. Down the hall in the department E today. So okay. Thirty minutes. Just right down. You know Under threat, I'll be there. Do you know where department E is? No, I don't. Okay, it's two doors down, same floor. Thank Just you. walk down the hall. After you go out here, make a right. On this floor. Mm -hmm. All right. Under threat, I'll be there. So based upon the representation provided to me by Mr. Green, the court would order that the proceedings be suspended for Penal Code 1368. And what that means is that, is there a request for one doctor or more? I think one. Okay. Uh, what this means is that there will be a doctor who will contact either your attorney, Mr. Slogan, or contact you. Um, so you need to make sure that you provide information your I don't have an attorney. I keep denying that I need an attorney on the grounds that I'm trying to have the prosecutor prove that they've submitted any jurisdiction in this case. I'm just asking for any evidence of jurisdiction. Okay. And they just keep saying that, I mean, I got it on record, but the prosecutor said no, they cannot submit any jurisdiction, any evidence of jurisdiction. And I just keep asking for it to get dismissed. And then they said, well, I'm incompetent because I'm asking questions. I'm trying to get clarified so I can shop for an attorney. I'm trying to get clarifications so I can represent, you know, myself or get an attorney. And I keep asking the prosecutor, have you submitted any evidence of jurisdiction? And she said it was in the police tickets, in the uh, police statement. And all I'm trying to say is, well, hey, can you show me where it, you know, the jurisdiction is on that ticket so I can make a better judgment for myself how I'm going to shop for an attorney. So I need to know what I'm dealing with here. And they just keep putting me out on recess and keep pushing me around. And it's and this guy is saying I'm incompetent. And uh, I'm just wondering, is that a legal determination uh, if I'm no, incompetent? Not a legal determination, and, that's and, why and what facts is he? Point, if, you, if you'll let me finish, is that's why we will appoint an attorney, a doctor, excuse me. A doctor will come and speak with you. And you may answer his questions, or you may decide not to answer his questions. Then he or she will provide a report back to me, and uh, the report will indicate you don't have a copy of it, as will the district attorney, and if you have an attorney, your attorney. And then you have the right to, or your attorney can submit on the report, or it may be set for a hearing. Yeah. Clearly, if you explain your situation to the doctor and he agrees that what you're asking for is reasonable and there's no reason to declare a doubt, then he'll put that, he or she will put that in the report. If they have concerns about your ability to uh, cooperate with an attorney, then uh, that may be an issue. So usually this takes about three weeks, but we need a phone number for you. I have the address up in Weed, California. Is that where you live now? Uh, objection. I'm not here to make any statements where I live or what my phone number is. I was no, we need to have a place where the doctor can contact you. Otherwise, but why, I have to put you in the custody. But why does, do that. I understand, but why does a doctor have to be talking to me? What facts is this lawyer relying on that I'm incompetent? He talked to me for two seconds and then told the judge that I'm incompetent. Anybody here looking at me right now can tell that I'm not incompetent. I'm standing here on my own, you know, only under threat, duress, and coercion. I'm here. Because some guy pulled me over, he pulled out a gun, said he's searching me. All of a sudden, I'm in court. I don't know who these people are. I'm asking for jurisdiction. That's all I'm doing. I have the intentions of pleading guilty today. Your case won't be getting resolved today because now the court is questioning your competency. I don't know what you mean by jurisdiction. If you're stopped in Napa County, then Napa County has jurisdiction over you. Okay, well, thank you for clarifying that for me. I'm just trying to figure out where's the, the actual facts, the evidence in that. Where is that? Where can I look at that? Uh, there is an arrest detention complaint form which was filed by the California Highway Patrolman who stopped you. 
and he indicated that he stopped you, and I will look for the place. It looks like it was at Markley Cove okay. by uh, that... Highway 128. And since that's in Napa County, that means jurisdiction is in our county. Yeah, and, I'm, and you can understand, I'm just trying to get things clarified. And is that the only evidence that the prosecutor has? Right now, as to where this took place? Is that their only evidence of jurisdiction? Is well, It's because I was physically here in Napa that they have physical jurisdiction over well, me? They would have to have the officer testify that he or she, whoever it was that stopped you, that they stopped you in Napa County. That would be evidence. And it would be up to the jury, assuming you asked for a jury trial, it would be up to the jury to decide if they believe that evidence was proven beyond reasonable doubt. Okay, so let me get this straight. I'm just trying to clarify some things, and we would have, would have already been done with this. So what you're saying is that ticket is jurisdiction? Well, it's, it's a step in that. It doesn't mean if you can test this, you have the right to ask the officer perhaps the question, isn't it true I was in Solano County or that I was mm -hmm. in Lake County? Okay, and so... If he or she said, oh, that's true, then there's no jurisdiction. And there you are, you're done. All right, so... Uh, he testifies, he or she testifies, yes, this was in Napa County, and the jury believes it, then jurisdiction has been proven. So this, this is the only evidence right now is that the prosecutor has is that because I was physically in Napa or I was physically in California that the Constitution applies to me based on the arrest detention flight form right now that's all there is okay and I just need I have a point of clarification I need to know where can they show me that where on the ticket it proves jurisdiction like where did I sign off my life saying that yeah I give you guys jurisdiction because all I remember is they had guns out tasers and I was scared and I just did whatever they said because they had guns under threat, I, duress, and I coercion. I didn't have anything that you signed, so all I have is an arrest detention complaint form. Okay. Which I would be more than happy to print for you. And there are. Oh, I have the packet, but I was trying to figure out where in there does it say that there's jurisdiction. On this copy, I'm going to give this to you, and I will ask the people of the location to highlight that. This is their jurisdiction? That's the allegation that I have. Okay, so this ticket is just an allegation. It's not evidence. No. So why am I here? This case needs to be dismissed. So it's being printed for you right now. I'm asking the judicial system to highlight the portion where it goes to the this, location. This one right? That's not evidence. Oh, he said it was. So um, it's being highlighted right now, and we'll do that to you. This is evidence at this point. This is just information indicating where you were arrested according to the officer who stopped you. Officer. I'm sorry, what was the name? Okay, so at this point, uh, Mr. Bott, are you going to provide an address? You don't have to do that on the record. At some place where the doctor can contact you. I'm not here to talk to any doctors. I actually came here. This is the second time, second arraignment. I came in the very beginning because I have no time to come down here. I live in, up in Oregon right now, and I'm actually homeless up there. Your personal problems isn't the court's problem. Stop trying to gain sympathy from that. I, I came because I wanted to plead guilty. I had the intentions of pleading guilty. If they could just show me a couple facts. Well, this isn't the place for the trial, so as far as having evidence that's sworn, it does show you, and you did you get the ABC form, the form that we just handed to you? Yeah, this paper here, but okay. from my understanding, jurisdiction can be challenged at any time, and jurisdiction, once challenged, cannot be assumed. It must be decided. That's, that's fine. So if you want to have a trial, you can have a trial, but we don't. Well, I mean, can you see where I'm coming from? It's like I could say I could say Santa Claus is real because I say so. So to so come to my court, I'm going to show you, you know, Santa Claus. It's in the book. I can show you books about it. But I need physical evidence. I need facts that this jurisdiction, that the prosecutor has jurisdiction over me. Okay. You, do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not sure. But if you have your trial, that is what the prosecution has to prove. They have to prove From my that there is jurisdiction. 
from my understanding, though, you can actually challenge it any time. This is a presumption right now with what I've given you. That's the presumption yeah. that Napa County has jurisdiction because the arrest was made in Napa County. Yeah, presumption. It's right. But you don't I, get to have a trial just at any point to ask for it. You can set it for a trial, but they can't have all the witnesses every time mm -hmm. they're coming out of them. But how are they going to get me to go to trial if they have no jurisdiction. It's just like if I was to sue you right now, would you make it to trial? You would probably challenge jurisdiction and then boom, it'd be out. Just because you didn't commit a crime, it's corpus delecti, there's no one hurt. There's no, I mean, there's no one harmed. So this is, here's your choice, Mr. Bob. You can provide me, or provide on paper, it doesn't have to be an open court here, an address so that a doctor can contact you. Or if you don't want to cooperate with that, I don't have any other choice. But the, to have you taken into custody so the doctor can evaluate you here, so I would, I would also ask that the court set the date. I can give uh, him the our, our information and have him contact our office, and we can coordinate with the doctor. That way he can stay out of custody. If he doesn't would you, show would you up, like to do that? Give the information to Mr. Wynn, who's here on behalf of the public defender's office. That would be confidential. I mean, I'm under threat here. You're threatening me with jail if I don't talk to a doctor. If you can't tell that I'm not competent or if I am competent, I don't know. I mean, how, how do we all have you people in here running our state or city or country when you can't tell if someone's competent or not? I can tell pretty quickly. I mean, but you tell me what you want me to do. What under force. I mean, provide me either with a date and time that the doctor or a day that the doctor can meet with you, and then you can figure the location you don't have to give us your address so it could be in okay. oregon no it would have to be down here in public defender's office if you don't want to provide okay the only time i'm going to be back in this area is october 16th or october 18th but let the record know that i am denying this and i'm being forced into this with jail right I so okay how about October 18th, we'll try to see if we can have someone who can evaluate you on that day. So, do you know where the Public Defender's Office is located? No, I don't. Okay, we're going to give Mr. Wynn here, we'll give you the address. You will need to be in touch with them prior to the 18th so that you know what time your appointment will be. And then you need to make that appointment, and then we'll set a date about two weeks after that. Does that work for everyone? Yes, please. Okay. So, is there a... Then we'll put this on on November 1st. Your Honor, given the defendant's objections, does the court want to appoint two doctors? Maybe three, because this is just going to keep going in a huge circle. I mean, if she can't prove her jurisdiction, I'm going to keep asking for jurisdiction, physical evidence of any jurisdiction. Uh, I'm going to keep 1st, asking. So November 1st, 2016, at... at 8.30, you need to come to this court. October is when I'll be back. I know you'll be here in October, but then you need to come and address your case here. You've been charged with charges, and you have to make your complaints about jurisdiction. I'm not complaining. I was just asking questions and trying to get things clarified. Okay. They answered your questions about jurisdiction multiple times, but you refused to accept their answers. So, uh, at this point, I don't know that I can have two doctors available. Yeah, it's a huge waste of money, but if you want to do it, I mean, so, go for it. Mr. Lynn, what's your thought? I think we should start with one. Okay. So, uh, October 18th, you need to be in touch with the, uh, the public defender's office to find out what time you will be interviewing you for your... What do you ask that I do this for? Well, when the defendant is not in this agreement, I think the statute requires two doctors. Okay, and how am I going to get someone without putting them into jail to, who is not cooperative with me, to be able to have a second interview? Because I am not going to make two doctors sit there and wait for him. Or if you can prove that it applies to me, the statute you're talking about. Well, I mean, I just, I think you, you need to follow the law. I think if you come here and, and he objects, if, uh, or appoint another doctor, who do we have in queue? Who's the next one? Captain Thompson is the, the first one, and Daisy Switzer is the second. And we will appoint those two doctors. You will need to be in touch with the public defender's office. If you do not cooperate, then you will feel that you are being threatened with jail because that is, in fact, the reality. Okay, and see you. Uh, you need to be at public defender's office 
on the 18th or whatever date they've told you, you will need to meet with two doctors now that you're contesting this fact, and you are to return to court on November 1st, 2016, 8.30, right back here. And do these doctors get paid by the same people you guys get paid? Um, I don't all? know who pays them. I don't pay them. Okay, because if it was the same people paying, I think that would be unfair. Well, then you can worry about that at the time you contest Okay, I, I just need to write all this stuff down for if I have to appeal all this. It would be very helpful to, for you to stay in custody if you can. Oh, I'm not worried about it. Okay. I'm pretty competent. You can step outside and talk to your friends. Y'all have a good day? Am I free to go? Thank you, Doctor. You're well, awesome. Wait a minute, then. Why don't we appoint you right for the 18th since we, since we have a doctor here? So, this is one of the doctors you'll be talking to okay. uh, when you come down back here on the 18th. I'm Joel. Can we just do this right now? Can you tell I'm competent or not competent? It's October 18th, and speak with Mr. Wynn as to where you need to meet, and perhaps you can meet with Dr. Weber right now to figure out. So I could just schedule something with him? We'll appoint Dr. Blinder and Dr. Thompson. And I hope this is all on record so we can uh, eventually get this out. I just, if I could this is insane. insane. For the record that Dr. Blinder happens to be in court here on another matter, and somebody noticed that and asked them, <laughs> yes. okay. Thank you. Am I free to go? I, I want you to speak with Mr. Wynn and Dr. Blinder so you can schedule your appointment for the next time. We will see you November 1st at 830. In my opinion, this sovereign citizen is a prime example of what not to do in court. He was argumentative, asked the same question multiple times, and ultimately, because of his behavior, he was ordered to undergo a competency evaluation. That's going to do it for this video. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.